Hello, everyone, and welcome back to The Attic. You know, I never, I never, ever anticipated I'd be doing my show not in a television studio, but in quiet solitude in my attic, slowly descending into an ever-deepening chasm of infinite madness. But all things considered, I've really, I've grown to like it. You know, there's a magical quality to this attic as evidenced by the fact that my beloved copy of The Thorn Birds has multiplied and mutated into anagrams of itself, unpublished sequels, similar sounding titles, and even other literary classics with a Thornbird twist. And let's be clear, that's magic. That's not something I'm doing because it would be a colossal waste of time. The door behind me has provided entry to not only wasps and firemen, but Academy Award nominee Ethan Hawke, leading some to ask Seth, have you ever thought of going through that door? And yeah, the door does speak and beckon for my entry, but I assure you, I have no interest in finding out where it leads, and I certainly will not be lured by its siren call. And speaking of ignoring things, segue, the president has decided to inhabit an alternate reality where the coronavirus pandemic just doesn't exist, even as the U.S. sets a single day record for new cases. For more on this, it's time for a closer look. An undeniable lesson of the Trump era has been that one of our two major political parties is filled with mentally unwell weirdos. Yesterday, for example, at a hearing on Attorney General Bill Barr's various abuses of power, GOP Congressman Louis Gohmert tried to drown out a witness's testimony by banging the table, and he wouldn't stop. If this conduct in particular gives cause for great concern about what Barr may do next. Just one, one, another 30 seconds. In closing, it needs to be said that Bill Barr does regularly lie in ways that impact official action. Along with his continuing media project to make Americans believe that the FBI conspired against Donald Trump. The witness will continue. Can I have one more sentence here? By all means. Okay. But to me, Barr's crowning dishonesty is the portrait of Edward Levy that a Mr. recent- Mr. Chairman, I would ask Times that, the, uh, that the sergeant at arms witness be concluded. called upon to stop the disruption of this meeting. I can't hear this witness. This is a very important witness. What yeah, well, he's way right? beyond and the chair. Yeah. Has and if the there are no rules about when people can the talk, authority, there's no not. rules about when you can make noise. Ah, well played, sir. There aren't any rules about when you can make noise. And what a good point for a 66-year-old man to make. You know, there's also not a rule saying you can't interrupt a witness's testimony by streaking across the house floor in a giant foam cowboy hat. You go, Mert. If he's going to be this irritating, can we at least get him a Hector Salamanca bell? I mean, they do have the same haircut. That knockapalooza really is one of the most childish things I've ever seen in Congress. And this is a place where senators have brought snowballs onto the Senate floor, red green eggs and ham, and printed out a giant poster of Michael Cohen's face that said, liar, liar, pants on fire. Congress is like some sort of Montessori daycare where for 40 grand a year, your child is supervised by other children. We like to think of it not as a daycare, but as a community. Good job with the knife juggling, Ashley. Be who you are. Oh, God. Oh, that's a... That's a lot of blood over there. So that's what a Republican member of Congress was doing on a day when the U.S. set a new single day record for coronavirus infections. And what about the president? He was tweeting about, you guessed it, lobsters. President Obama destroyed the lobster and fishing industry in Maine. Now it's back bigger and better than anyone ever thought possible. Enjoy your lobstering and fishing. Make lots of money. Cool. So if you're one of the 40 million people who lost their job during the pandemic and had to wait in line for unemployment, just jump in a boat and catch some lobster. Instead of a second stimulus check in the mail, every American's gonna get a fishing net and a pair of rubber boots. But you gotta be suspicious when Trump tweets a bunch of nice things about your industry out of nowhere. It's like getting flowers from your husband on a regular Tuesday morning. Your first thought has to be, what'd you do? Well, it won't surprise you to learn that Trump is lying about this too. And when you can lie about lobster, the sky's the limit. Next, he's gonna tweet, unemployment among dogs, birds, and lizards is at an all-time low, enjoy. In reality, Lobster exports plunged after Trump took office thanks to his trade war. Lobsters were one of the first products to get hit with a tariff from China. Until it went into effect, China was Maine's second biggest customer, buying nearly $129 million worth of lobster in 2017, but exports plunged 84% during the first 11 months after the tariff was imposed. Of course Trump is lying. If he really thought he'd made lobstering so profitable, he'd be going from restaurant to restaurant, plunging his hands into lobster tanks, trying to steal as many as he could. Damn you, you son of a bitch. Keep those pincers away from me. This lobster is Antifa. So a Republican congressman was banging on tables and the president was lying about lobster as the U.S. was setting a new record for coronavirus infections five months after our first official case. Remember, 
At the beginning of this outbreak, when you heard the phrase flatten the curve over and over again, like you were watching a Billy Blanks workout video, come on everyone, two knees raises into a sidekick. Tybo is all about flattening those curves. That's why we all stayed in our homes, watching Maury and drinking cereal straight out of the bowl in our sweatpants for three months. The point was to get cases and hospitalizations down to a manageable level and to limit community transmission so we could get a rigorous system of testing and contact tracing in place that would allow us to safely get back to some semblance of normalcy. Instead, the president has squandered all of that, complained that testing makes him look bad, and called on his government to slow testing down. And now, his administration is following through, cutting funding to testing sites as the outbreak reaches its worst levels yet. There's a new plan at the White House for how to deal with coronavirus testing at the federal level in states across the country. Jeff Bennett reporting that the Trump administration is planning to end its funding and support for coronavirus testing sites at the end of this month, that is on June 30th. That's right, they're cutting federal funding for community testing sites now as the outbreak hits a new peak. That's like a pilot turning off the seatbelt sign after they graze a mountain. Don't worry, folks, we just nicked one of the Rockies. Feel free to stretch your legs in. Don't look out the window, I assure you. At least half of our wings are still attached to the plane. At what point can we say Trump is actively putting people in harm's way? He holds indoor rallies, refuses to wear a mask, and wants to cut back on testing. Soon he's gonna start going door to door, coughing on people, licking their doorknobs. Just yesterday it was reported that dozens of Secret Service officers and agents were told to self-quarantine after Trump's Tulsa rally. Trump's a one-man super spreader. He is the Ozark swimming pool of human beings. That's why his Secret Service code name is Typhoid Gary. Typhoid Gary's on the move? Well, it's less of a move. It's more of a lumber. Trump has said repeatedly, since the day this all started, that he dislikes testing because it makes him look bad. And even after his staff tried to claim he was joking, he corrected them and said he was serious about slowing down testing. Mr. President, are you people to slow down testing. Were you just kidding or do you have a plan to slow down testing? I don't kid. By having more tests, we find more cases. Therefore, we test, we're going to have more cases. By having more cases, it sounds bad. It sounds bad because it's bad. Look, man, if you don't like the sound a smoke alarm makes, stop putting giant balls of aluminum foil in the microwave. But I need to keep my foil ball warm. If we stop testing for cases, that doesn't mean the cases aren't there. That just means we don't know about them. You can go into a roadside motel room without a black light, but it doesn't mean the linens are springtime fresh. So now our curve is headed back up after months of Americans making tremendous sacrifices to try to flatten it. Meanwhile, there are lots of other countries that really did flatten their curves. Just look at the European Union or the dozens of countries that have successfully suppressed their outbreaks. The first group is the countries that have appear to have successfully suppressed transmission of the disease, that that curve has come all the way down so that they are barely registering any new cases. We have Andorra, Australia, Austria, Bhutan, Cambodia, China, Croatia, Cuba, Djibouti, Estonia, Greece, Iceland, Jamaica, Jordan, Kosovo, Latvia, Lebanon, Liechtenstein, Lithuania, Luxembourg, Malta, Mauritius, Monaco, Montenegro, New Zealand, Slovakia, Slovenia, South Korea, Taiwan, Thailand, Tunisia, and finally Vietnam. Wait, 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 wait slow down. Hey, honey. What would you think about moving to Mauritius? You always said you like the sand. You like the sand, honey. Sounds like a list of countries Jay Leno would ask a bunch of spring breakers to find on a map. Ah, uh, where's uh, Djibouti? Right here, baby! There's Djibouti. We even did worse than Iceland, a country that has a penis museum and where, and this is true, people still believe in elves. The only mythical creatures we have are pasta goblins. Finish your rotini, Anthony, or the pasta goblin will come and steal your neck. Yeah, that is a callback to yesterday's closer look. I mean, I'm... Guessing it's the same people watch every night, right? Anyway, if this is your first look, welcome aboard. We used to have an audience. America could have been like one of those countries. In fact, some of them have been able to restore the cultural markers of normalcy we all crave, like live sports with fans in attendance. This is a welcome sight for sports fans. No social distancing and no masks, as 43,000 fans were in the stadium for a rugby match in New Zealand. The country had remarkable success eliminating the coronavirus. This weekend's match marked a big milestone. No new cases of the virus have been reported in more than three weeks. New Zealand had fans in attendance at a rugby match. Meanwhile, the NBA is planning on trapping its players at Disney World like a family stuck on a three-hour line for Space Mountain. I told you 
We shouldn't have wasted a fast pass on Journey into Imagination, LeBron. I told you. We could have been like New Zealand. They're going to live sporting events and eating nachos in the sun while we're stuck here with President Lobster, trekking to Trader Joe's every two weeks in a beekeeper suit stuffed with Clorox wipes. If I don't make it back, don't forget, microwave the mail. Because our outbreak is actually getting worse. We just set a new record and the peak is now higher than it was back in April, despite the fact that Trump and his team repeatedly told us they had succeeded in flattening the curve. We've flattened the curve and really made tremendous progress. I'm proud to report to you as the head of the White House Coronavirus Task Force, we slowed the spread. We flattened the curve. I think you'll see by June, a lot of the country should be back to normal. And the hope is, is that by, by July, uh, the country's really rocking again. Is there anything less rocking than hearing Jared Kushner say rocking? If James Hetfield said, are you ready to rock? And then Jared Kushner came on stage, fans would tear the place to the ground. What even constitutes rocking for Kushner a second? Glass of rosé on the catamaran? Let's just face facts. Jared is Steph from Pretty in Pink with worse hair. Because Steph, you were real a-hole. But with hair like that, I just can't stay mad. Wait, would I like Kushner if he had Steph hair? No, nope, take it away. And that's a second callback to yesterday's closer look. Trump has decided to just ignore, and even worse, actively cover up a national catastrophe that is only getting worse, despite months of sacrifices by Americans who endure tremendous pain. There's no way to conclude anything other than the fact that the president is actively putting Americans in harm's way to serve his own narrow political agenda. It's true, even though... It sounds bad. This has been a closer look. Papa. As New York works hard to reopen under phase two, remember that we're still a city in crisis and City Harvest has been stepping up to meet the increased need. If you're watching this online, you can hit the donate button. Stay safe, wash your hands, we love you.